Hey everybody, Miff here, and welcome back to my Baldur's Gate saga with SCS completionist style playthrough. Um, and welcome to Candlekeep, I guess. This is the gameplay, the episode one, uh, proper start to the, to the playthrough. And just as a quick recap, if you didn't watch my introductory video, as it was quite lengthy, uh, here are my characters, uh, here are their stats. They're going to be Kensai for the entirety of Baldur's Gate 1, and let's go. So basically, once you land in Candlekeep in the classic Baldur's Gate 1, you would get a message here telling you to go uh, clockwise around Candlekeep. And that actually makes sense on your first playthrough, because you can pick up the quests and um, basically get to know all of the errands people want you to run. But we're not going to do any of that. We're going to go counterclockwise, because we already know what to do. But first, we're going to enter Winthrop's Inn here. It is done. And already here, there are like two lesser-known things yes. in this uh, inn that I, I feel like not a lot of people uh, know about. Uh, one is an Easter egg, and the other one is a charisma-influenced uh, conversation. It is done. So first, let's talk to uh, Firebead Elvenhair, and uh, he's going to give us a quest. So basically, uh, also when it comes to conversations, I am going to read some of them out loud, like my favorite ones or some of the most important ones, but generally I'm going to click through, but not so quickly, so that you couldn't like pause and read yourself if you want. But if I do that, I am going to summarize uh, what they want from us. So Firebeat here wants uh, us to bring a scroll of identify from Tethtoril, who hangs out in the center of Candlekeep. But basically, this is not what's so interesting about him. This is kind of like an Easter egg thing. If you talk to him precisely 30 times, not more and not less, uh, something interesting is going to happen. So let's just quickly go through that. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we wait. And... The party has gained 300 gold. <laughs> and just, like... I don't know why that happens, it's just is. Uh, apparently some old trick that I actually didn't know about until, like, some... Uh, a few years back. Uh, so all these years I actually was uh, not aware of that. And there's a, actually another uh, place where we meet him again. And you can do this again. Talk to him 30 times and uh, what? I get another 300 gold for free. And so here's the, here is a desk. That's another interesting uh, thing here. I think it's a desk or whatever. And uh, there's a trap on it, actually. But it does not trigger, there is no message if you open this container. Uh, there's nothing, but you, if you start out as a thief, and you can detect it and disarm it for 25 experience. And, but here we have to bash it. I'm going to be using hotkeys a lot, but basically what I'm doing is clicking my uh, quarter staff and bashing this open. I'm just going to pick up the contents here. There's an uh, armor scroll, most notably. Now when it comes to these uh, two nobles, uh, they are a noble couple visiting Candlekeep. Anyway, if you charm her, there's actually a lot of uses for charm spell to uh, actually talk with the charmed characters, and you can get a lot of different info or just funny or interesting uh, lines that they will say if they are charmed. I think I'm going to make a separate video for that after I'm finished with the playthrough, just uh, showing off uh, all of the interesting charm uses. If you charm her, you actually get to know that his name is Thurston, and if you charm him, he's actually going to give you 20 gold, a fortune, and no one actually cares about us picking up this dagger, Normally, and I'm talking about this because generally when someone sees you opening a container and just basically, you know, taking some something that you're not supposed to take, uh, well, otherwise known as stealing, they are going to call the guards on you, but apparently they don't care about this dagger there. So if we talk with them... Uh, they are basically uh, kind of feeling uh, uncomfortable because apparently the monks in Candlekeep aren't giving them a warm welcome. And if you have 18 Charisma, you can actually um, choose this dialogue option. And I'm also going to have to remember to like use my mouse to choose the dialogue options. I normally use the 
number keys. Uh, but, you know, I want to use the mouse so we can see which one I'm choosing. Anyway, we can suggest that maybe it's because they have so much expensive stuff on them, jewelry and whatnot. And if you have 18 charisma, this actually succeeds in convincing them that, uh, well, he actually gets the idea to... Uh, a capital idea, lovey. <laughs> to actually lock up their valuables in the chest in the room upstairs. And what that accomplishes, uh, I'm going to talk about in a second what that accomplishes, because we're going to get to that chest in a second. Sir. So here I'm just going with uh, upstairs with Shen Senashira, because there's no need for... Uh, Another character being here, and just for like crowd reasons. This is a very important container here because it contains a potion of clarity, which is a very, very, very rare potion to get in uh, Baldur's Gate One. Uh, anyway, and this is a chest here, a locked chest. You can see that it's locked, and basically it's a very, very special chest in Candlekeep because uh, normally. Inside that chest, there is a star sapphire, a gem worth a thousand gold, if you sell it. And then if you convince the pair of nobles downstairs to lock up their valuables in their chest, it's actually this chest. And they are also going to place, uh, well, after that succeed, succeeds, in this chest, there's also going to be a pearl necklace worth 500 gold. And um, a gem, I think it's a fire agate gem, um, one of those. And the gem that's worth 250 gold. So basically, instead of just a thousand, or quote unquote just a thousand, you can actually get a thousand seven hundred fifty gold plus that fire bead elven hair trick for 300 for free, and you can get just a thousand, uh, two thousand gold just out of this inn <laughs> immediately at the start of the game in Candlekeep. But unfortunately, there's one, um, well, unfortunate thing. I guess uh, with this chest, it actually has a pretty big, pretty good lock on it, and there's only two ways of opening this lock. You either have to start out as a thief and you have to pump up your uh, opening locks skill up to about 57, I think is the lowest you can go to open it um, with some tries, or you essentially have to be a barbarian because even if you start out as a 19 strength uh, half orc, because half orcs can go actually up to 19 strength that still is not enough to bash this open. So you actually have to be a barbarian with high strength and use your barbarian rage that gives you uh, enough strength to actually buy, buy, well, bash this open. And I'm not sure whether you need like 20 or 21 strength or 22. Oh, I should not just stand about. Oh, stop complaining. you. <laughs> so as you can see, we can just, you know, keep trying. It's not going to work. But... You know, it's a great chest with great contents if you're a thief or a barbarian. Anyway, here's another noble. And another kind of uh, pretty cool chest at this beginning. This one we can actually force open. But uh, the thing with him is that he's there and he's going to call the guards if we try to loot the contents of this chest. Don't and um, me. I might catch something. Let, let's... let's uh, Apologize, perfectly understandable, whatever. You know, uh, this is not going to be really something that a good aligned character does. Yes, Let's actually bring Kira and I over. But it just matter. cracks me up every time that you can do this. Basically, what we can do is we can switch to our punches, switch to our fists, and just knock him out. <laughs> and, and he's unconscious now. And no one's actually going to be hostile. Like, no one's actually going to be the wiser about what happened and now we can loot this chest for 86 gold and a uh, flame dance ring that's worth 62 i think so we can get almost a 150 gold from this chest and it just cracks me up you just knock him the the freak out i guess <laughs> just some poor guy and uh you know no one's going to be uh you know, no one's going to react, react to that. No one knows what happened. All right, let's talk to Winthrop. And he's a big joker, so we can go along with that. Ha! Just having a bit of fun with you, my friend. All right. Let's buy some equipment now from him. So we can sell this. We can sell this for 62. So our gold situation, pretty good at the very, very beginning of the game. 750. I think we started out with 240 because we have two characters. Uh, now... 
we would like, we actually have a free dagger here and we're actually going to have a dagger plus one in a second. So that doesn't really matter. Uh, what I wanted here, and I'm not really focusing, let, let's buy two Warhammers for uh, Seneshira. There's actually another free Warhammer that you can get from one of the buildings in Candlekeep, but uh, also one thing that needs to be mentioned is that in on the Sword Coast, there's an iron crisis going on, and a lot of weapons are just brittle because they're made out of uh, tainted iron, and uh, they can break in combat. Like every swing, every successful swing, I think you you make, there is a chance that your weapon, that your metal weapons, can break. Uh, so you know it's really good to have some spares with you. Of course, as Kensai, we cannot use any armor, we cannot use shields. We want to buy one stack of bolts. And uh, that's pretty much it. We can't sell these scrolls. Infravision is basically 50 gold. It's it's a useless spell in the game. And armor is nice if you start out as a mage. Don't ever pick this as your starting selection, of course, because you can get it immediately. But, um, yeah. So we're going to be able to sell this uh, soon. In a, a different merchant will be able to you know, offer some gold for it. it is done. Right, so now we can just drop the quarter staves because they don't sell for anything. And uh, actually, yeah, take that dagger for now. All right. Certainly. And now we can actually start going around Candlekeep doing some some errands, some chores, I guess. Uh, one thing that also is, needs to be mentioned when it comes to that Firebead Elven Hair scroll, when he um, th that quest where he wants a scroll, that's actually a pretty common type of quest in Baldur's Gate One, where the fetch quests in Baldur's Gate 1, uh, oftentimes are not about uh, bringing some unique quest item that is otherwise useless, but actually uh, oftentimes they are about bringing them uh, some real items uh, that you can actually hold on to and just use them yourself at least for a while and then hand in the quest later or not at all, but uh, you know in this playthrough since we're doing a completionist playthrough I'm going to do all quests but there are going to be some quests where I will just hold on to um, yes, the particular item and just uh, you know equip it and just keep using it for a while. I am All right, now uh, a pretty cool thing is that actually he's going to ask us. Oh, we can actually talk with him about it. Yeah, we can ask him about any errands if he needs anything, and he wants a quarrel of crossbow bolts. But a funny thing is that if you split these bolts. Um, and just like put 19 on the ground and just have this one bolt. This is actually enough. <laughs> this one precious bolt <laughs> apparently is, is uh, worth its weight in gold. And uh, here is another instance of 18 charisma at work. Because normally he would say like, well, it took you long enough. And he would just give you a little bit of gold. But since we have 18 charisma and he likes us, He's actually is going to give us a dagger plus one that actually belonged to his uh, his father apparently, and uh, he's just nicer. So yeah, now we have a dagger plus one. We are not able to identify it, but uh, it is a dagger plus one. As you can see, uh, when we equip it compared to the normal dagger, our thaco is one lower and our damage is one higher. And uh, also tells us. No, it, he doesn't tell us about that. I think in the reaction where uh, he doesn't like us as much, he actually uh, tells us about Hull. Yes, certainly. Well, we just opened his chest to pick up his longsword and an antidote. And that's just one chest where, you know, you're supposed to be able to open. I guess you're supposed to have permission from Fuller to open his chest to uh, retrieve these contents. So no one gets mad and, like, you know, goes hostile and calls the guards because you're not stealing. You're supposed to pick that up. I'm quick saving here because Indeed. we're going to meet a person here. Yes. Actually, I Assume don't really want you to yes. do the talking. Certainly. Let's just move into a more suitable position. Here's a car boss, and he asks us if we're Garion's ward. And uh, let's let's ask him about why he's so interested in us. And he's just saying that, you know, he's basically going to get paid if he kills us. So he's a paid assassin. And basically what SCS does, which is kind of kind of silly, <laughs> is that um, they actually give this guy a kit, an assassin kit, which means that he actually is going to be able to poison his weapon 
and that means if he if he hits us, we're just going to die, <laughs> because that poison is going to. It's pretty much out healable at this point in the game. Well, you can first get a potion of healing. I see he used poison weapon, but Kira and I was able to just. Uh, well, I'm debating whether I should swear in these playthroughs or not. <laughs> Let's say mess him up. She was able to mess him up. <laughs> Alright, so now we have our, our, our teacher. Oh, actually, because we actually are not solo. Uh, we actually don't have this conversation. You know what? Let me just quick load and do this this thing. Um, this thing again, because I want to show you the other conversation, which is kind of significant. Alright, so let's, let's try to have this fight go as well as it did, and um, it did. Now, let me just quickly quick save here, and I'm going to remove Kira and I from my party, because there are two conversations upcoming that are different uh, when you're solo and if you start out with a party. So let's just remove her. What is it? So do you want me back in the party? No, I want you out of the party. It is done. Anyway, let's... Oh, we have the journal entry. Someone wishes me dead. Like there are assassins about in Candlekeep. Alright, so I heard shouting, Sinashira, are you alright? And you can like play it cool, or you can just be like, he's dead. He launched at me with a knife. Or like, it's very don't ask questions, Karan. <laughs> I need to appear like a badass. Like you have instructed and inspired me throughout my childhood, and your heart would break to see what has just transpired here. He's just, oh, child, you are too young for that. Um, <laughs> so I, anyway, there's another conversation here. There's going to be a gatekeeper. And um, if we have a full party, he's just going to say that Gorion's looking for us and, you know, we should go to him. But if you're solo, there's actually something interesting. Uh, apparently, Gorion asked him to uh, teach us about group combat. So we can refuse, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, so there's Ob, Obi, Obey, the Illusionist. Actually, this building opens if you have that, um, if you uh, accept his offer, I guess. And when you go inside, you're going to get a temporary party to fight these illusions that Obey is going to summon. And he just explains some basics of uh, group combat. Of course, you're you know, free to pause and read this for yourself. Anyway, we, I just wanted to showcase this because, you know, it, it's kind of a, a separate place in Candlekeep. But anyway, uh, it's also important because we get these temporary companions, and especially this one, Arcanus, and another one called Deader. We actually are going to meet them much later in the game, and we're kind of, you know, supposed to know them. So that's why I wanted to to showcase uh, those. Although probably if you first play the game and if you've done that, you probably won't remember any of the names of these companions that you get. And unfortunately, also you know they have some some uh, items with them, but you actually cannot uh, cannot uh, take them with you uh, outside of this building. They are you know they're they're just going to despawn. Uh, so anyway, you know some like summoned gibberlings are gonna show up, and it's just. You know, left click and watch, pretty much. And we don't get any experience for killing them, because they are illusions, and I don't, they don't, can't do damage to us. And it's just, you know, trying out some, some group combat. And he's going to ask us if we want, we want to go for more, and we will refuse. We've seen enough illusion bloodshed. Um, Alright, just take me outside. So we get teleported outside, although the door was right there. <laughs> and uh, this building... Indeed. Oh yeah, it stopped being available. And we lost an item because, you know, we had this wand of magic missiles here. And uh, like I said, you can't take any of the items uh, outside with you. So let me just quick load before I, um, before I removed Kirinai from my party and just... Whatever, Karan, you know... We should watch ourselves carefully. And now the gatekeeper is actually just going to say to go to Gorion or tell us that Gorion's looking for us. Hello there. You should go talk to Gorion as soon as possible. Well, we will do that in a bit. 
<clears throat> it is done. Now here, it's kind of an interesting thing. If you charm this guy, this reader, he actually tells us... Excuse me, but I'm um, my well, here he has a mountain of dishes to tackle, but if you charm him and then talk to him, he's actually going to tell us that he's trying to write a novel about Drizzt, a misunderstood hero. And if we talk with this guy, Priest of Ogma, he actually asks us, asks us uh, if we need any potions, and... We can say, yes, that would be nice of you, and he's actually going to give us a potion of healing, which is nice. That's a potion for free. And um, if you want to, like, wait them to move so you can loot this, we could, but it doesn't really matter in the long run. So he's just standing there. I so I don't want the guards to be it called on me, and I don't want to just deal with that situation in any different way. Here's Hull, and he has an errand. I cannot save at this time, okay. I, I don't know why I'm quick saving so much, it's just a habit. You'll have to forgive me for that. Hmm. Right, hey kid, he woke up with a hangover, pretty much, and left his sword in the barracks. And we already have that because, you know, we went like this counterclockwise, we all, we've already been into the barracks. Hmm. And now, normally if he doesn't like you, uh, if he, you don't have pretty much 18 charisma, he's actually going to be pretty rude to you, and uh, he is going to seem very punchable, <laughs> I guess, but since uh, he likes us because we have 18 charisma, he actually says, Garan didn't bring you up half bad, did he? And, uh, you know, he's, he's just going to be a little touched by the by our plans to leave and give us 20 gold. Yes. And we got 50 experience for that. Uh, now there's another Another quest, epic quest. And actually the game Magicka, if you've played that, actually refers to. And done. we're going to be killing some rats. Uh, apparently Revor here asks, uh, asked us I yesterday to clean out the rats from this storehouse. So let's just do that. There are some minor treasures in the barrels here. It is done. I think it's this barrel. No. It's this. Nope, wow. My memory is pretty bad, apparently, when it comes to Candlekeep. Indeed. And here, John Delar is going to have another training. You're first, you know, when you go clockwise, you're supposed to encounter him first. And that's just very basic combat practice. He's going to tell us that he's going to have a little surprise once we get into combat. And the surprise is that Archer friend of his. And basically, they don't do any damage to us. Basically, if we just... Well, uh, the fight should end. We've dealt quite a bit of damage to him. Alright. You're quite a fighter. Yes, we are. Alright, now... This is a temple of Ogma, of course. You have these tutors that can teach you about the game. About these different places. And they teach you about the temple as well. Uh, one thing I want to say that is that we have 11 reputation. And one way of increasing your reputation is by making donations to different temples. And the donation amount depends on what your current reputation is. Uh, basically, around the middle, when you're at 10 and 11, it's the cheapest to raise it. And then it goes higher as you go higher with reputation, or as you go lower, actually, the price raises. And you cannot raise your reputation through that uh, higher than 18. So we have to get those two final reputation points by just going out in the world and doing some good deeds and stuff. And uh, normally in Baldur's Gate 1 there are plenty of free reputation gains, but... Um, uh, well, one time I think I had a playthrough and I tried to count uh, what, the repu what would my total reputation be if it didn't cap out at 20, and I think I counted to like 38, and I don't think I was very precise. Uh, I might have skipped some. So there's like plenty of free reputation gains to get, but it also matters how fast you can get to 20 reputation and get those juicy discounts so that you can buy some really good stuff in the game uh, that much earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to donate 100 gold here. That was enough to uh, raise my reputation by one point. So now we're at uh, 12. And I'm going to make two donations of 200 gold. And that was enough. And now I have to donate 300, I think, for another gain. So now we're at 14 reputation already. And through a couple of uh, 
different good deeds in the beginning of the game, we can actually get to 20 reputation quite quickly and then have uh, some of the powerful items available to us at a much cheaper price. So here's Drepin, our childhood friend, I guess, and uh, he tells us about Flidia's book, uh, that, that's another errand, but then he also uh, tells us about Nessa, the cow, being sick, and he wants to, us to fetch, out, fetch an antidote from Hall, which we already have, so we talk to him the third time, and uh, we get 50 experience, and the book is here in the stacks of hay. It is done. Now, let's go into this priest's quarters building. Yes. And there's, there's another suspicious person approaching us. Oh, goody goody, I've gone and found you first, because you're kind of supposed to encounter him first. You are the Ward of Grind, no doubt. Um, I do not recognize you. Who the hell are you? And it's important who we are, because apparently there's a bounty on our head. So again, th this is the second assassin, or really the first assassin. As you could see, uh, he also has poison weapons, so if you get hit by that, it's pretty unfortunate. And there, there's a free dagger, there's a free warhammer in this, um, an 8 gold. There's a free warhammer, I think, in this, uh, in these crates. Yeah. So that's yes, going to spare, uh, to save as a spare for us. Oh, let's... I, I am here. messed up again. Mm -hmm. Because Parda normally... You see, he has, he says the same thing as Karan uh, on the southern portion of Candlekeep. Um, so I'm going to quick load and just Indeed. do this again, just to show you the conversation, because that one... You know, is is unique, and Parda is supposed to be kind of like our, you know, a concerned teacher. Yes, it is done. Oh, that was the eight gold here. So again, I'm just going to temporarily uh, remove Kira for yes. from my party just to show you that conversation where Indeed. Parda is is concerned and we can of course play it cool uh, well we can either be like you know desperate oh Parda there was a man in there he smelled like the stables like that's like that's what you choose to tell him <laughs> like that's how you describe him that like that's the the most terrible thing about him is that he smelled like the stables and he he tried to kill me it was horrible or we can play it cool like it's nothing Parda one of the cats s scratched me hmm yes well Get what you need from the inn, and go to grind. All right, so I just wanted to t show that you that conversation because if we are in a group, you know it, it's different. Okay, and there's one last. Well, we have to talk to Teth Toril and take that um, scroll of identify. And there's also uh, second to last errand, I guess, is Flidia here, who is very absent-minded, and she left her book in that stack of hay. And she actually gives us a minor gem. So I'm going to leave Kiranai here and just go with Senashira and go look for Testoril. And here he is. Greetings, young one. Uh, uh, Testoril, actually, by, by the way, like he is a very powerful character in the lore of Forgotten Realms. He's actually like personally protected by three deities. If you try to harm him, like in the game, it's he has a, kind of like an instant kill spell which I guess is supposed to represent the, the fact that he's being protected by three separate deities. Uh, by Ogma, by Mistra, and by Denair. So, yeah. Alright, so one thing about the quest that I've said is that, you know, this scroll of Identify is debatably, or maybe not even debatably, it's just more useful than handing it uh, to Firebeat Elvenhair, but since we're doing all quests, I am going to return this scroll to him for a minor experience amount, and he actually casts Protection from Evil, but I don't think Enhanced Edition uh, like changed the duration of it, and it's a very short duration Protection from Evil. Uh, we don't want to sell that Warhammer. And now we are done with Candlekeep. And we can pass by these Chanters over here. And if you're familiar with the game, you'll know that even like, th this is one of the million reasons Baldur's Gate is so great. Even such a seemingly unimportant thing like these chanters, just chanting the prophecies of Elando. Indeed. 
they have chants about the prophecy of El Aundo, and if you play the game for the first time, you probably have no idea about that, but if you've played it once at least, you know that this is actually significant. Like, even such minor touches, seemingly completely random or unimportant, they actually matter. Man, I'm not, I'm trying, I'm trying not to be too spoilery, I guess. If that's even a word. Alright, so here's our childhood friend Imoen, who is incredibly important when it comes to the story of the entire saga, and is one of my favorite characters. Um, so what should we tell to her? Tell her. Uh, I'm afraid I cannot chat today, little one. Oh, <laughs> she's she's pretty uh, funny here. Um, a journey, eh? I never get to travel. Wish I could go with you. Yep, I really wish I could. Yes, ma'am. Really do. <laughs> and there are a couple of different um, different responses, and no matter what you choose, she pretty much is going to slip up a little bit here. Alright, alright. I get the message. I'll ask if you can go with us. Oh, don't be silly. Garan would never uh, even let you finish the sentence, especially after what the letter of his said. Um, did I say that? <laughs> no, of course I didn't. Never saw no letter. Nope. I'll just go back to work now. <laughs> so uh, she was looking at some some things that he, she shouldn't have, I guess. And uh, yeah, just double, triple check if we did everything. It's pretty impossible that we would miss anything. Oh wow! Actually, we did. We cleared out the rats, but I didn't uh, hand in the quest. So I will also take this opportunity to demonstrate the control J that I was talking about in the introductory video. I will sometimes use that in cities just to move quicker so we don't have to watch her walk. I'm just going to teleport her and talk to Reaver. And he gives us five gold pieces. Don't spend it all in one place. All right, Reaver. And I'm just going to... See, there's this quest log, man. It's this enhanced edition quest log, dude. It's important. It's uh, helpful. All right, teleport here, please. And let's talk to Garin. It is done. Oh, my child. I am glad I have found you. So we can normally ask him, uh, like, tell me where we will be going, and he has not truly decided yet. He just wants us to move out of Candlekeep, because the keep is not invulnerable, and we should be just on the move. But why? What is he talking about? Why is he so nervous? What could possibly harm us here? This place is a fortress, and guarded beyond measure. But, well, we've already met two assassins that, ma that uh, managed to sneak in, so... Well, Candlekeep is indeed a formidable obstacle for never duels, um, but it is not insurmountable. No, my child, we must leave as soon as possible. All right, so I'm ready to go right now. Listen carefully. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the friendly arm inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Jahira. Actually, the Enhanced Edition added this priest to heal you. Normally, the Gorion would, and he's a mage, so he shouldn't really be able to. Let's hurry, Dad. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. You are perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unhurt. I am sorry that you feel that way, old man. In case you didn't hear it, because it's pretty impossible to hear it, Grand says, run child, get out of here. So we run. And Gorion has an epic fight. This fight is actually completely different from the classic Baldur's Gate 1 fight. It actually makes sense when it comes to what spells are being used here. Dawn is especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. 
It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. Yep, that's it. Gorion has died, and we have this imposing, threatening, armored figure that also wanted to kill us. So, that's pretty intense. And there's Imoen approaching us, for some reason. Sorry I fooled you, but I never got a get out of Candlekeep, and those monks are such a bore. Never any decent coin in their pockets, neither. I, I saw Garion, and I'm so sorry. Kind of figured something bad might happen to you out here. How could you have known? Garion did not even tell me. I accidentally read a letter on his desk the other day. Can't remember exactly what it said, but he might still have... It might be on his, his body. Anyway, I'm not gonna let you wander around out here all alone. Never let a friend down. No, ma'am. Stick with you until you say otherwise, I will. So yeah, she's a very likable character in my opinion. As you can see, if you're familiar with the game, I have a slightly changed portrait of hers, where, where her uh, hairstyle is slightly different. I like it better that way. Uh, she's a thief. And um, she has some pretty min-maxed stats. She has maximum dexterity, she has maximum constitution, because something that I forgot to tell you in my introductory video is that, I, I think I forgot to mention that, is that uh, all of the classes except uh, warrior classes, so fighters, paladins, rangers, and barbarians, actually do not benefit when it comes to the bonus HP um, above 16. So for thieves, for mages, for clerics, uh, 16 is actually the max that they get a, uh, a, well, at least the HP benefit out of it. And she actually has a pretty maxed out intelligence when it comes to dual classing into a mage. And this is something that we were we are going to do at level 4, I think, once she maxes uh, her open locks. Her open locks is pretty low right now, so she actually won't be able to open too much. But, you know, once she gets a level or two, it's it's going to get uh, much better. And at level four, she's going to be able to max it out. And then we're going to dual class her and use another character for, for some trap needs. And besides, uh, actually, when it comes to a lot of early traps, you, you, they, they their requirements for finding and disarming them are so low because the developers obviously, you know, figured that they shouldn't have, like, traps that you could get, uh, like, really hurt by. Um, that wouldn't be disarmable at, at like, you know, a, a early part of the game. And she actually can be your uh, face character as well with that 16 charisma. That provides a little bonus. Uh, face character meaning she can do some conversations, she can provide a little bit of a discounts with 16 charisma, I think. Uh, anyway, I will customize her script to be none because I hate automatic things. I like to control everything personally. Uh, Alright, and also one thing I would like to refer to is that uh, Garan said um, uh, The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry, I will explain everything as soon as there is time. Because obviously there is no time when you're wandering through the woods for hours. Obviously there is no time to talk. Well, anyway. It is done. So now uh, we can start our adventure, and it is now where the game uh, really kind of starts. Now we can pretty much go anywhere, do anything. From here on out, uh, we can access the uh, a lot of areas that are open. This game is very open. I don't think I've mentioned that. It's a very open world game, and uh, that's why I say that we can go anywhere, do anything. There are many different routes that we can take. I am going to, just to follow the story a little bit more coherently, I guess, I am going to go, as Gorion hinted at, that we should seek out his friends in the Friendly Armin. I'm going to go as your kind of, you know, intended to, I guess, to first visit Friendly Armin. I'm going to go there. And from then we're going to go south, because there's going to be a reason to. 
And this is kind of like, at this very beginning, I'm going to kind of follow the story um, as you're kind of supposed to, I guess. Uh, here you can, we can immediately actually open up High Hedge and uh, a good route, a very common route, I guess, is to just immediately go to High Hedge, go to Berigost from there, and uh, that is kind of like a central hub that you can just, um, you know, just go anywhere, just whatever you think you want to do first to launch your adventures, I guess. Certainly. All right, so this is where Garion died, ambush site, I as the enhanced edition adds the... Uh, the map pin here. So we're going to investigate that in a second, and here comes Colsed. And he's basically some hermit wanderer. And this is something that uh, the, the BG1 NPC project adds, this interjection in the uh, conversation. Normally there would be nothing like that. And uh, I invite you to read all that. They are pretty cool. I'm not going to read all of them obviously, but you can pause and read. And the call said here is supposed to be like a very introductory NPC that can give you some advice. And, um, well, let's ask him about these friends in the Friendly Arm Inn, because he's, he tells us that he saw two um, not very friendly people, apparently on the road, traveling. All right, thanks for your time. I shall be on my way. Fare thee well, as they say. If you're rude to him, he's going to say, like, well, not a good start for you. I, you shouldn't be rude to people, I guess. So on the road, if you follow the road, there's going to be Zar and Monteron, and I am going to recruit them temporarily. They are mostly going to serve as uh, cannon fodder <laughs> in an upcoming fight, pretty much. Certainly. So um, they're one of those NPC pairs that uh, normally you can't split. Oh, and actually that gives me the opportunity to talk about that um, very briefly. Oh, actually, let, let's maybe first recruit them. Zar is a uh, pretty much a mad mage, a mad necromancer. He is uh, not well in the head. <laughs> so even this is again NPC project. You know, Imoen is distrustful, but well, whatever. Let's let's uh, welcome them into our party. Nothing to fear from these simple potions. And he's right, actually. A lot of, uh, well, maybe not a lot of, but there are instances where people offer you potions that are actually cursed potions or like not what they seem, but they actually have good potions. It's actually, even if you don't want to have them at all, one reason to just recruit them for five seconds is to just get their potions because <laughs> they have an oil of speed. Uh, so they want us to go with them to Nashville because they want to investigate some some troubles in that town. So um, all right, I'll, we will we have to meet someone first. I don't like the looks of those two jokers. Nope. Yeah, and these two jokers again customize their script so they don't do anything out of their own volition. And now let's let's check out our companions. Imoen is actually pretty nice because she has these uh, health potions. Actually, you get some health potions here from Zar and Monteron as you recruit them. Uh, Imoen has an oil of speed, and Monteron has an oil of speed. So let's just have that. Zar has some scrolls, and uh, all right. Now we have actually six, seven healing potions, and this is actually an enhanced addition. Um, addition the addition in this edition uh, because I don't I've played recently the classic version with Tales of the Sword Coast and she doesn't come with a wand of magic missiles which is a very unimpressive um, wand but it's actually pretty useful in these early stages of the game especially when it comes to interrupting casters and um, oh yeah probably should show her proficiencies she has a uh, short bow short sword Monteron <clears throat> he's actually a fighter, thief, multi-class, halfling. She's actually, he's actually a pretty good character. Uh, they are both evil aligned, by the way, Monteron and Zar. He's chaotic evil. He's just completely mad, but a very likable character, actually. He's a necromancer. They're all, of course, level one, with almost no experience. And uh, Monteron specializes in short swords and slings. So he has a short sword there. Yes, it is done. Um, oh, by the way, I am there's certain. a hidden 
Oh, this is another uh, BG1 NPC project uh, thing. Imoen just asks us how we're doing. Um, well, uh, I'm fine, I guess. Do you have something on your mind? And of course, this is a big change in the lives of our protagonist and Imoen, you know, being out of Candlekeep and just being on our own, basically in a big world. That's also something that I just want to mention. Um, if if you pick up this game and, and play it, I would really recommend actually talking even with characters that uh, don't have a unique name. You know, it's obvious that they don't give a quest or anything like commoner or peasant or something like that. But you can really get a feel for the general atmosphere and the, the general goings on of this world. And you can, you know, get yourself immersed um, in the game and get the general Sword Coast atmosphere about the different events and problems going on and it gets, gives you the feeling that you're just like a small part of this much bigger world that goes on whether you know you live or not I guess uh, you know you're you're not some uh, focal point at least you know at this point of uh, the what's happening on the Sword Coast Alright, I'm still the same old Senator. Don't worry. And yeah, like this is pretty cool that you you know you have supportive Imoen. You know that guy, whoever he was, who killed your dad. We'll find out who he is and pay him back good. And don't even think about ditching me either. I know what I'm doing, and I'm in this as much as you. I liked Gorion, and you're my best friend. I'm your best friend too, whether you know it or not. You can count on me, and don't you forget it. Like such a cute, likable character. What brings this on, dude? <laughs> I'm just mad, that's all. Mad, sad, and a little worried. <sighs> yeah, she's all worked up now. So, as you can see, this S... Uh, not SCS, BG1 and PC Project, like, look at how well all of this is written. And both when it comes to the substance, when just, Imoen just asks you, like, how you're doing, you know, after these traumatic events, and the form, like, everything's... Just ah, such a good mod, man. All right, uh, since we're here, let's open up another area east of here that we're going to go to. It is done. And if we open up to the north, I well, it actually doesn't open up anything, if I remember correctly. Let me just double check. Oh, of course, I forgot. Czar, there's a hidden thing in this tree. Or is it? Am I doing this wrong? Yeah, it's not this tree. Of course it isn't. Yeah, it's, it's this one. It I don't know what, what's up with my memory here, but... Alright. You can loot a diamond. And again, BG1 Project actually takes this opportunity of how weird this is, and Imans were like, wow, and Winthrop used to tell me that diamonds don't grow on trees. Sure, in Candlekeep they don't. Timora favors us, seems to me. Timora is the lady of luck. Now, here's a messenger. Sorry, chum! Uh, so, he gets gives you an idea that, you know, there are some goings on, like... There's been another caravan raided northeast of Beragost, and I must report of dire straits to the Grand Dukes in Baldur's Gate. Another caravan raided. Caravans, bandits, road, like an adventure from a book. Just keep your heads down. <laughs> He's a uh, more... More of a realist there. Uh, just a wolf encounter. No big deal with our big party. I usually don't have that many people right now. I usually just stick with Imoen. Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> Modron. The diseased gibberlings actually have only 4 HP. And there's kind of a pretty cool difference between uh, gibberlings, normal gibberlings, that have 8 HP, and the diseased ones actually have 4 HP only. And there are also mutated gibberlings in Baldur's Gate 2 that have 16 HP, if I remember correctly. Alright, so that opened nothing as I, as I uh, remembered, but really didn't remember so much if I decided to double check and triple check. I think that might be a common thing in this playthrough. <laughs> I'm just going to be checking a lot of stuff over and over, just to not miss anything. 
That's my worry that I'm just going to forget about something that I wanted to show. We can pick some stuff out of these killed um, ambushers, I guess. You know, we can pick this armor for Imoen. I just don't like the look of Imoen in, in armor. Like it basically just, you know, goes over her uh, pink colors. Alright, so here is Garion's body. And we can loot some stuff off of him. And another yeah. conversation incoming. Is that Garion? Yeah. He died saving me from some thing, I guess. Don't you even know what attacked you? Whatever it was, looks like it was vicious. It was too dark to see much, but it was humanoid, although I couldn't see a face. His eyes glowed, though, like hell's fire. And we would have gone straight for me if Gorion, God re God's rest his soul, had not barred his way. Oh, let, let's choose this one. I see. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Now, okay, if we pick this conversation option, there's actually a, a, another cool opportunity that the BG1 NPC project takes. Yeah, about a burial of Gorion. You can actually choose to... Yeah, you're right, we should bury Gorion. Of course, Zar just letting us know that he's not right in the head. Although he's a necromancer, so obviously he has a special uh, relationship with death, I guess. Don't you go and die on me now, Sinashira. I don't think I could candle it if I had to bury you as well. Don't worry. Don't worry, Amon. You bury Gorion in a small stone cairn where he fell. See? Like, these, like, small cool things that the BG1 NPC project does, so cool. Anyway, we looted a belt off of Gorion. This is actually another thing added by the Enhanced Edition. This is uh, unfortunately not that useful of a belt, because it's a belt that provides you 100% immunity to cold damage, but also a minus 100% like vulnerability to fire damage, which is much more common. So th this can be used in like very s like a few circumstances, like cone, like basically the Wand of Frost in Baldur's Gate 1. It doesn't cast Cone of Cold in here, but a targeted projectile, so it's not even useful for that. There is a certain mage in the Cloakwood Mines that um, we could use this against, I guess, but this is so far in the game that I'm just going to sell this belt. Belt of the Antipode, I think it's called, um, just for, like, 150 gold or something like that. And then we have Gorion's Scroll. It's a letter from someone to Gorion. And um, I'm just going to scroll through it so that you can pause and read. This is apparently from a friend of Gorion that didn't really want to get involved uh, into the matters at hand, some grave matters, and he urges Gorion to leave Candlekeep this very night, if possible. The darkness may seem equally threatening, but a moving target is much harder to hit, regardless of how sparse the cover. Yeah, should, again, you know, uh, should anything, you, you get another hint, should anything go awry, do not hesitate to seek aid from travelers along the way. Again, hint to a new player, I guess. I do not need to remind thee that this is a dangerous land, even without our current concerns, and a party is stronger than an individual in all respects. Well, not all respects, but... Should additional assistance be required, I understand that Jahira, or as Goran says, Jahira and Khalid are currently at the Friendly Arm Inn. They know little of what has passed, but they are ever thy friends, and will no doubt help however they can. I'm getting too old for this. E. So, we can figure out who this E is, I guess, uh, a little bit later. So, Gorion had some some friends and, and some powerful, powerful um, figures in the Forgotten Realms lore. I'm going here because there's a guy that I think Again, not that many people know of. There's a suicidal person here that we can talk to. Oh, did I miss him? Stop me. <laughs> Just Zar. Good old Zar. Oh, here he is, like almost hidden. It is done. Don't touch me. And 
It's basically a suicidal dude. Don't come any closer or I'll jump. Yeah, you heard me. And I'll do it too. Don't try to stop me. And I can be like, okay. Okay? You aren't going to do a thing? Wow. You must have incredible faith in my will to live. No one has ever shown such trust in me. Not ever. Not even Mumsy. Thank you so much for your quiet faith. I choose to live. I choose to live. Oh no. I have to get home before Mumsy finds th the note. She has no stomach for such things. I'll have Jeeves double her usual cocktails and tell her of my new resolve. Thank you so much. Tralla. Life is grand once again. <laughs> this is you know, <laughs> one of many uh, <laughs> things like that in, in Baldur's Gate when there's humor. Uh, what a tool. Uh, there's uh, quite a few like very funny characters, but it's never you know too ridiculous or it's never um, like too much. It's never over the top. And this is just my OCD about uncovering the map, but actually let's not do it. We have seen everything this map has to offer, so let's just like teleport ourselves to the border. And you know what? This has been almost an hour, so I think I'll end the episode here, and I'll see you in episode two. Thanks for watching.